Joining us from Los Angeles, Logan Browning and Marquis Richardson. Welcome to the TAM fam. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I, what? I mean, this cast is just so beautiful. I'm going to be superficial. Just a stunningly <laughs> attractive group of people who are extremely talented. Uh, Marquis, I love that this season was very different than the first three. It was a musical. Oh, yeah. And you've said that yeah. you've only sung in front of dogs and trees. And now you mm -hmm. all are doing a whole musical. What were the reviews from the dogs and the trees when you were singing? Uh, well, the dog is over there, and he's asleep and <laughs> bored. So uh, the trees are still alive. Um, they haven't died yet. And so I, I think we're doing OK. Um, <laughs> that's all I got. When they said, Logan, OK, musical, what did you think? Honestly, I loved it because, you know, I was already on the show. What are they going to do? Get rid of me? I'm like, you got, you kind of stuck with me whether I can sing or not. So let's do this thing. You know? Let's do it. I love it. Well, that's the spirit of the show. Let's do this thing in that you're touching on clearly um, very difficult conversations, but you're bringing satire and wit and this thought-provoking humor. Roy Wood Jr. was on earlier, and I asked him who was his favorite comedian. He said Chris Rock, because Chris has the ability to unpack serious things in a humorous way. When you first learned your character, how did you prepare for that balance of serious, but the need to just also be humorous with it? Wow. Um, oh. Mar Marquis, I see you. <laughs> Marquis like, there I got an answer. Go ahead, Marquis. <laughs> like me? Um, yeah, there was there was nothing like unfortunately, I don't feel like I had a lot of the, the comedy stuff, um, which I love to do. Um, but my character, you know, had suffered some PTSD from an event that happened in season one where a gun was drawn on him at a uh, at a at a at a college party. So then kudos to the creator, Justin, and the writers who kind of kept it true. But with satire, I mean, you know, it's comedy, but it also makes you think. So for right. me, it was just important to just play the honesty of the, uh, of, you know, creating that life. And so just the truth. Right, the well, comedy. that's the thing, Logan, the, the saying, you got to laugh to keep from crying. And mm -hmm. that's, I think, a part of what that show hits on. You are authentic in the struggles of, you know, black kids at this Ivy League university trying to live in two worlds, your home life where you came from in this new world, but also to laugh to keep from crying. Yeah, you know, they say you got to you gotta get folks laughing so their mouths are open and you can feed them the medicine, yeah. you know? Uh, but also there is something very funny about uh, being the only one. I mean, uh, so many people have that experience and uh, you're kind of like laughing by yourself in your head. So this is kind of cool because everyone gets to laugh out loud with each other at things that we're having those shared experiences. Yeah. Um, also, our set is just hilarious. Hi, my name is Sam, and I just have to say, Dear White People is the best show on Netflix, literally the best show. I do activism on campus, and it's just so cool to be able to be able to see myself in this show when Reggie is like developing an app to make black people more safe in their community. Just like, oh my God, like what if we did that in real life? I thank you all so much for like inspiring people like me to be able to, you know, push forward with our activism and our progress and have people on screen that we can like look up to and feel inspired by. We are back with the stars of Dear White People, Logan Browning and Marquis Richardson. Logan, the show is coming to an end. I know, right? Aww. I wasn't ready. That. I really I, wasn't that was ready. one of the fans, and that's what the show means, and that's what your work means. And it's that's coming so to an end. Whoa, sorry. Hey, Tamron. <laughs> <laughs> These millennials just do whatever they want. Now you're crying. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, uh, no, we wanted you to see that, because that's the impact, Logan, that this show is having on People your age and older, I, you said something before the break. If you want people to digest medicine, sometimes you got to make them laugh. You have to reach them where they are. You're still crying. Uh, okay, wait, what is your what is your generation called? You out here dogging the millennials? Weeping. <laughs> I'm not dogging you. I'm just saying y'all are softer than you appear. You like, you little. That's right. 
Evolution. Right. Evolution. That's right, Missy. <laughs> I grew up on Tupac and Left Eye. You can't touch this. MC Hammer, thank you. Uh, listen, no, people think millennials get a bad rap that you guys are, you know, uh, all about yourselves. And, I, and then you have this show that really shares the story of what it's like for kids of color in 2021 to go to university and the university thinks it's woke, but you wake them up for real. And that's why that kid who just did that video was so moving and so touching. What do you, what do you want the legacy of this show to be? I mean, it's right there. It's right there in the fact that he's inspired to make real change in the world, you know, from, from, from storyline and, um, and for people to feel seen, because if you live in a world where you don't see yourself, you feel like you don't exist. Yeah. Um, and to feel like you don't exist is dangerous and um, terrifying. So for someone to feel like they're seen in every space is very important. It is. It is. Oh. Marky, wh what do you think is next? I mean, both of you are moving on. The cast is so close, and you've all built this bond together. I mean, I'm sure some of you are codependent, like texting each other, calling each other. You know, Logan, those millennial things. What will you do without each other? <laughs> That's funny. I actually just got back from uh, Houston hanging out with uh, our castmate, Deron, uh, <clears throat> Deron Horton, who plays Lionel on the show. So, I mean, I don't know if we will be without each other. I don't oh. imagine that happening. I mean, it really is a family and I. I, I mean it when I say it. Like, I love each and every one of these people, these castmates, and so I got their back, and I know they got mine. So um, it doesn't stop here, for sure. Yeah. Well, it is a brilliant show. I mean, it, it is one of those shows, much I, very different than The Wire, clearly, the content, but it's a show I think years from now, people will study it, and it's impact, right? Because when The Wire was out, people didn't fully appreciate it. Now there are university classes on The Wire and its social impact, and that will be, I think, the legacy of this show. Years from now, people will recognize even more than they do now what you've created together. So thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you. You are brilliant, brilliant actors. Oh, yeah.